everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to um, do a little bit of drawing and a little bit of painting and um, what we're going to do today is we're going to um, draw some trees by the side of a lake and uh, we're just going to first of all try out drawing them in this uh, pencil I've got here which is a Conte pencil from Conte à Paris and uh, made in France and it's a kind of charcoal-y type of thing but it's inside a nice um, wooden, um, what would you call it, case or something like that. Um, and the benefit of that is it's a bit like drawing with charcoal and in the last video um, I drew in charcoal a hibiscus flower which um, was what I, I did that in order to relax a little bit before I started the painting and to um, get into the mood and to think about how I was going to design the picture. So that's what I'm doing here. I think if you're having a, a, a difficult day uh, like we so often do and uh, today I had a builder in laying some concrete and um, so that's never easy is it when they come along and and everything goes all topsy-turvy for a little while. Um, so anyway, I at the same time as that, I I needed to do videos and I needed to do two because tomorrow I have a, I've got to make a trip to a nearby town um, with a, a friend of mine who's got car problems and she needs someone to take her to go and pick up a new car and um, it's, it's not that easy for her because she's not very well. Uh, anyway, so I can barely spare the time, but nevertheless, I'm going to go and do that. With Tamsin, we'll go out in the morning, so we won't have a chance to paint in the morning, which is what I normally do. Um, and we'll have to, so therefore I've got to um, fit in two videos today, which is great because I, always looking for an excuse to draw and paint and got plenty of excuses now since we started doing the YouTube and um, as you probably know we've just passed 10,000 subscribers which is unbelievable and um, so we're very grateful to all of you and I'm just very excited about all of this. Anyway, so we've got three kind of um, sort of, uh, what do you call them, larches or something like that on the side of this lake. And we're just taking the branches up a little bit now. And they're kind of, the, the trunks are sort of slender. And when you use this pencil, you'll find this very exciting because um, it just wants to turn back into being a tree because it's charcoal which is made from a plant and it's much more near to the whole idea of being a tree than a pencil is which is made from not made from the same thing at all so yeah give it a try um, I'll put a description in the description below I'll put links to the um, to this and you could buy yourself a set for just a few a few dollars a few euros a few pounds a few whatever's it's not an expensive investment. So I'm just kind of indicating where the remnants of the leaves might be here, just with some scribbles. And, um, and then once I'm happy with this proposition for a composition, um, I might go ahead and paint it. So yes, I think that's okay. I've got four trees, four thin looking trees there. You could do them summery, you could do them autumn-y and you might want to do it the other way around so it's 
uh, more of a vertical format, but that's quite nice and restful. It's always the case that the um, horizontal format is more peaceful rather than when you do it this way around and it's going to be more dramatic, if you see what I mean, more kind of focused in a kind of upward sort of way than, than when you do it like this. So there's a sketch. I'll put the sketch up on uh, the website for you on diananton.com and you can download that for free for your pleasure. So I'm going to stop there for a second and set myself up to do the painting. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the initial drawing on this in ink and I'm going to be using um, India ink, which is actually Chinese India <laughs> Indian ink. Renang King is this one this one is called Encre de Chine Intense Indian Ink. So it's all a bit confusing. Anyway, I'll put a link to that in the description below. I've done a very hasty uh, sketch on here just with the side of the pencil. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to start with the trees and I'm going to allow them to kind of grow out of the uh, paper. I'm using a piece of stretched watercolor paper. This is, I think this is um, Lana watercolor paper. And, um, and I'm using a glass pen, um, which is a very nice thing to draw with. You can go quite a long way with one dip into the ink with this pen. Quite interesting how much you can do with it. So a very pleasant experience. It's nice and smooth. It flows beautifully, nice even um, uh, line and you can break it up as much as you want. And so my, my trees are leaning in towards the water and I'm just going to take the main branches out to over, uh, cross over one another. And I'm just enjoying this. I, I'm not, um, don't have a particular plan. I'm not going to um, try to create a masterpiece. This is just um, an enjoyable way to relax now the builder has gone home. And I uh, heartily recommend this as an anti-builder antidote. And the thing is, just make sure all your branches as you go up, they divide and they get thinner because you don't want a big fat one coming up the end there, misbehaving. And then once you've got enough, what you think of is enough trees, you can come in and just do some really nice um, squiggly outlines because you, if there's one thing you don't want to do, it's to draw every leaf on the tree. Some people do, I don't, too lazy. So we'll get the basis in and um, so just think of the the uh, the leaves as being in kind of clumps and then once we've got these kind of clumps in and these clumps are going to reflect your personality you know you can't it can't be any other way so whatever happens is going to happen so then I'm going to just sketch in the horizon line there, which is going to go right the way out like that. And then down here we've got some something of a kind of bank like kind of thing going down to the water. We had it here, I'm working from this. And lots of really fantastic opportunities for just letting it all happen. So you've got your little beach type of thing there. These trees could probably do being a bit fatter, so we'll just strengthen 
strengthen them up down that side there with a bit more. I imagine the one thing that you might want to do with an ink pen made of glass is just not press too hard, so I need to restrain myself on that. But uh, I don't know how strong it is. I think it's made from the same sort of glass they make Pyrex dishes from, so it's probably fairly strong. Anyway, um, so up here, we're going to, going to do a kind of scribble of shadow of the trees growing along the edge of the lake in the distance there. And then we need to come up a little bit. I'm thinking of Canada while I'm painting, drawing this. This is making me feel like the, I don't know, the Manitoba or somewhere like that where you have these long lakes. And then we'll put some reeds down here. Some mace or bulrushes. A few squiggles on the water. Take these branches up here a little bit further as well. And I'm going to put some colour on there. Okay, so Great fun drawing with that, so I'll put that back for a minute there, and I'll just close up my ink. Now, if I'm going to do this uh, in watercolour, I will probably just restrict myself in terms of colours quite a bit, and uh, my usual blue is um, cobalt blue. So we'll use that for the sky and maybe also for the water. Or we could use cerulean, um, which I don't have. I'm out of cerulean, so I'm going to go with cobalt. Uh, then quinacridone gold is always a good colour for the shades of autumn. I know I've got that somewhere. What have I done with it? Is this it? It looks like it. Quinacridone gold and then maybe a touch of olive green, maybe a little bit of sepia or burnt sienna. I'm not sure at this particular moment in time. So I think uh, as you can see the top of the tree has been cut off. I have cut off the top of the tree. I'm going to use my um, uh, cat's tongue, my Zen Art um, Black Tulip cat's tongue brush for this, only because I've got it. And um, I'm going to start off and just drop in some uh, quinacridone gold and a bit of burnt sienna. I'll give myself a, a nice kind of Russety, autumn-y sort of, and I'm just going to put it in in some kind of loose, a loose way, not really joined up, and um, a little bit more burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of blue, which is going to give me a bit more of a kind of shadowy sort of thing, and we'll just see how that goes with this brush. We want a nice variety of colours, don't we? So we'll see how that goes. And then um, I think probably a good idea to approach the sky. And we'll just, let's just make it nice and 
loose. This is, you could call this a loose painting. And uh, it is, it is going to be loose. Don't forget to put a little bit of blue in the holes in the tree where the, the birds fly through. And uh, make that nice and, the idea of kind of windswept clouds going across the sky, perhaps, you might say. So then we're going to be looking for some green in the distance. And distant green, in my opinion, is usually on the blue side. So uh, we, want, we want that to be a little bit fairly strong on the on the uh, cobalt blue. So we'll just remember this is pen and ink. This isn't, this isn't pure watercolour. Now we're going to come back to the water. So we want a little bit of blue with a touch of green. And um, And we just, this watercolour paper is fairly quick to absorb and fairly slow to um, agree to be altered. So we will just try to make our strokes as definite as possible right from the get-go. And um, now we need green and blue and quinacridone gold for these foreground grasses and things. So let's just use, oh, and also perhaps a bit of burnt sienna. And you can hold the brush in a different way if you feel you want the impressionistic style. And then we're going to sweep across the front here a little bit using a kind of dry brush technique very quickly. And a little bit more down here perhaps in the way of blues. Now, I don't really feel very happy with the trunks being as light as they are. So I'm going to put some brown in there and some blue because I remember being told once that tree trunks weren't brown and I've sort of had a phobia about accidentally making them too brown ever since then. So plenty of blue in the tree trunk area but not so that it looks ridiculous. Okay, now we might, might want a little bit more on the water at the back there, just to... And maybe... Just some grasses in the foreground here too. And the last thing you want to do is to overemphasize and do too much detail. I always remember Roland Tilda saying, you have to have an area in your painting that allows the eye to rest. And I think that's very important. And here in this particular case, it's the water, I think, and this area here, which is the restful area. And, uh, but I do think it would be quite nice to have a couple of birds coming in over the water. So I've done those in pencil and uh, we will um, enhance those later a little bit. And uh, the other thing is, having got to this point, I now feel that um, I want to bring this branch a little bit stronger. to also 
bring one out to the side there to balance the way these are. I'll put another another whole tree in there at the back because that doesn't look quite right. I just want to put some, I don't know if I can use this on the side. Yes, you can, oh, there we go. Some nice random calligraphic marks. Might be easier to do that with a brush, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Here's my black tulip. Yes. Yep, that's exactly what we needed some stronger lines down there and uh, this brush is perfect. You can see how that just brings and then maybe a little bit more dry brush. Okay, I'm going to stop there and call that done. So there we are, a little lakeside sketch in pen and ink, brush and ink, Indian ink and watercolour. And I hope you enjoyed that. And that's the quick one for today. Give it a try. And uh, don't forget to check the description for the links for anything that you might not have that you want to use. So I'll let you go and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye bye.